All right, so we're still calling it Twitter, right? Let's make it cool again. There's this mod called Hachidori that works on any phone, rooted or not. When you long press the X at the top, a secret menu will pop up, letting you disable nearly every bit of junk, like the who to follow feature, promoted trends, promoted users, the for you tab, Google ads, you name it. It's even made by the same crew behind the twee fucker mod, and Hachidori is basically a rewrite of that. The best part is that there's even a Telegram page that patched the mod for you so that you can install it on any non-rooted device without any hassle. I'll leave that link right below the like button. Next, you know how the latest Google Pixels let you create wallpapers with AI? Well guess what, you can get that same feature on your phone too. First, grab the OG Google Wallpapers app from the Play Store, then hop over to APK Mirror and download the AI Wallpapers app, make sure it's version 14. Once that's done, open the Google Wallpapers app, scroll to Live Wallpapers, pick AI Wallpaper, tap the gear icon, and boom! You can now generate AI Wallpapers with Google's generative model. You even get to choose between different themes, colors, categories, and more. The only catch is that you can't set it directly as your wallpaper, but you can long press it to preview it and then screenshot it to use later. And that's just two out of the 15 FOSS apps that I'll be showcasing in this video. If you're wondering, FOSS basically just stands for free and open source. And yes, all of these apps that I'm about to show off are completely FOSS and not available on the Play Store. Plus, I've even saved the best FOSS app for last, so be sure to watch the whole way through to find out what it is. Also, only a small percentage of folks watching are actually subscribed. So if you're enjoying the content, why not hit that subscribe button? It's completely free and you can always change your mind later. Everyone's heard of ChatGPT by now, but did you know that it can replace Google Gemini as your phone's voice assistant? Yup, with a plugin called VoiceGPT, you can make it happen and it works surprisingly well. Just make sure you have the official ChatGPT app installed, set up VoiceGPT as your voice assistant, and you're good to go. OG Android users, this one's for you. Remember the classic lineage icons? Well, you can get them back by grabbing them from GitHub and applying them to your launcher. They're super similar to Google's old icons, and there are even square alternatives or the newer icons from Lineage OS. Total nostalgia trip. Over on iOS, there's this slick browser called Arc Search, and it's got this super minimalist design that makes browsing a breeze. It's got a tabs page that looks like Android's recents menu, and the address bar is at the bottom, expandable with more options. And when you want to search for something, there's also a browse for me button that uses AI to do some digging and give you a summary of what it finds. Now it's not on the Play Store just yet, but the developers have announced that it's coming to Android soon. If you don't wanna wait though, the APK has been leaked and I left a link down below to be able to download it and get it working on your Android. It works like a charm too. Looking to boost your battery life? Check out Enforced Doze. It forces your phone into a deep sleep state, also known as Android Doze, the moment you lock the screen, and it pauses most background tasks. Now normally, Android Array does this by default, but it takes a few minutes to, to enter into deep sleep. But with Enforced Doze, your Android will go into that state right away. It's incredible. Plus, if you're rooted, you can take things even further and even disable the motion sensors so that even if you move your phone around, you still won't be able to leave deep sleep. And you can even disable the Wi-Fi, mobile data, and biometrics while the screen is off to further improve the battery life. If you don't have root though, don't worry, you can still get that instant dose. For anyone who's de-Googled their phone, but still misses the convenience of some of their services or apps like Google Maps, GMaps WV might be exactly what you're looking for. It's an open source app that lets you access Google Maps through the web so that you don't actually need the Google Maps app. You can still search for businesses too, get directions, and even explore the whole map while keeping your phone free from Google's ecosystem. Plus, the app is just 88 kilobytes in size, so it takes up virtually no space. Speaking of Google, some of their apps are kind of hidden away, and unless you know exactly where to look, you never even know they exist. For example, your phone probably already has classic games pre-installed, like Minesweeper, Pac-Man, Snake, and Solitaire. 
but they're only accessible through the Play Games app. Or maybe you didn't know that Google has a password manager, or that it has a music discover feature similar to Shazam. There's even a built-in weather app too. Well, if you download Google Shortcuts Launcher, all of these apps can be shown up in your app drawer as shortcuts made easily accessible one tap away. Thumbs up for that one. This next app is pretty wild. It's called Keyboard GPT, and it basically integrates ChatGPT, or Google Gemini, right into your Android keyboard. And it doesn't matter whether you're using Gboard, Samsung's keyboard, SwiftKey, or Flexi, it supports all of them. Here's how it works. Just open any text field on your keyboard, type a question mark, followed by your command or question, hit enter, and voila, your response will appear in the app that you're using. You can even switch AI providers by typing two question marks or searching the web with an exclamation point and an S followed by your query. The only downside is that this app is an LS Boast module, but you can use the LS Patch app to patch it to your keyboard if you're not rooted. If you need help with that, I left a video tutorial in YouTube's cards. Finding a decent newsreader app nowadays can be a bit of a challenge, especially one that isn't outdated, full of ads, or loaded with sketchy permissions. Luckily, I found a solid option called Raven, and it works like a charm. It makes it easy to catch up on all of my favorite news outlets, and when I tap on any article, it'll only include the text, hyperlinks, and images. No ads, no pop-ups, and none of that annoying stuff. You can even save articles to read offline, and it uses morse.it for custom full text RSS feeds. Here's a fun one, Cuberite. It lets you run a full Minecraft server right on your phone, and it's super easy to set up too. Just grant it storage permission, hit install, and it'll take care of everything downloading the server for you. Once you hit start, it'll give you an IP address that you can enter within Minecraft to join the server with your friends. Plus, you can manage the world within the console tab using standard Minecraft commands. When you're done playing, you can then kill the server with just a tap. It's that easy. Just keep in mind that it only works with the Java edition of Minecraft, and more specifically versions 1.8 to 1.12.2. If you didn't know, you can actually block all the ads on your phone by just heading into the settings, going to network and internet, selecting private DNS, and within that bottom text field, you can type in dns.adguard.com. Hit save, and most of the ads on your phone should now be blocked. It's that easy. Plus, there are other DNS servers out there like NextDNS that let you take things even further and customize the ad blocking experience. Now, the only reason I'm mentioning this is because there's actually an app called Private DNS Quick Toggle that adds a tile to your quick settings, and it makes it easy to switch between DNS providers or to just even toggle them on or off. And this can be handy in certain situations, like when you're playing a game and you want to just watch the ads to unlock rewards, or when you want to support a website you like by allowing it ads. Next, I have Motion Lock, which automatically locks my phone whenever I place it face down on a table. It only takes a few seconds for the device to lock, regardless of your screen timeout settings. And don't worry, it won't lock itself when you cover the front sensor during phone calls because it still requires the phone to be stationary on a flat surface. Comes in handy if you forget to lock your phone when you leave it on a table. If you ever need to secretly record a video while your screen is turned off, you can use FadCam. Within it, you just hit start, and then you can close it and use other apps. Or you can even lock the phone and it'll still continue to secretly record. Once you're done, you just hop back into the app, hit stop, and your video will be saved. Works like a charm, and within its settings, you can even change the camera lens to the back or front, increase the resolution, and more. And now, for the best app on this entire list, Update Me. This app is a total game changer for anyone who likes using modded versions of apps because it gives you a whole repository of them. These mods remove ads, bypass restrictions, let you be anonymous, unlock extra settings, and more. Update Me will even notify you when there's a new version of the mod available so that you can keep everything up to date. It's a must have for any power user out there. Now that one deserves a thumbs up. Anyways, tap on this card to view a playlist of all the previous best apps that I showed off that are also not on the Play Store. I've been doing these type of videos for years, so you have a ton to go through. Thanks for sticking to the end and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!